should have wore my Adidas. <laughs> History is made right here, y'all. All right. So the importance of this event and this year is to try to redeem and to recapture some of what has been taken from the masses, especially from Africa, from the people who generate a lot of this culture. For instance, if you ever think about the obelisk, which in ancient Egypt were called Tekkens, they were not called obelisk. This is some Greek invention. The first thing that conquerors do is they take the people that they conquer and then change their names so that they no longer can see each other or see themselves, especially when they look in the past. So our material reality has been taken all over the world and this has happened to be one of the places where we grabbed what's been stolen from us, recaptured it, brought it back and gave it a physical manifestation. And that's why we start this year to create holy places where the culture can be recognized because this is what every culture does they all have holy places Muslims have the Kabbalah they have a place that they go the Jews have a place that they go the Christians have a place that they go hip-hop culture though unlike each of those religions is everywhere and will have places everywhere but this is one of the first places we're gonna have because this is where cultures came to merge the Native Americans whose land was stolen from them the Africans who were stolen from their land were brought here to build a new way to live such that all of those wrongs can be righted. And that's what this is about. When they take your names, when they take all your material manifestations, a lot of people never even think about it. They think slavery and colonization is over, but they don't realize that the things that were taken from them were never given back. Just by saying you're emancipated doesn't free you. It's you getting back what you had so you can continue to build for humanity. And that's what this is all about. That's what all of this is about. All of the elements of hip hop come straight out of the culture. And finally, we're redeeming them. And by redeeming them, we're redeeming ourselves. And that's what this is about. Forward up, backwards now. Peace and welcome to the Temple of Hip Hop. I am KRS-One. The Temple of Hip Hop is a hip hop preservation ministry, archive, school, and society established in 1996 to ensure hip hop's divine development as culture, as a culture of peace and prosperity. We get together like this on Sundays, Eastern Standard Time, 12 o'clock, to discuss hip hop in its spiritual, philosophical sense. We're reading our gospel of hip hop. And what's so interesting is the clip you just saw with Professor Z. It's so interesting what Professor Z was saying uh, about, about colonialism and its effects on indigenous people. And you know, with our lecture, our, our teaching today is not about colonialism <laughs> in that sense. But if you're spiritual, <clears throat> if you're a spiritual person, or even a philosophical minded person, someone seeking truth. You have to always ask yourself, who is giving me my truth? Who is delivering to me my truth? My concept of God, where did it come from? Who told me that G-O-D was actually the name of God or the letters or symbols that recognize God? Why is it G-O-D, God? Is that my original language? Is that what I originally called the, the force and intelligence that the G-O-D refers to? This is what we have to realize. We have to look at this. If you're serious about your spirituality, the white Jesus on the wall, the Asian Buddha, these images of, of divinity are, are uh, colonial driven. They are imperial visions, uh, imperialistic images of divinity so the government and the colonists can look like they are above you. This is what we have to deal with. And it's not even about pointing fingers at any specific person or people. This is the truth. This is the truth. Who gives you your concept of God? Now, Professor Z was talking about preserving material culture and how you got to take back material culture. He was speaking at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue where the, um, 
well, when we did the 49th uh, birthday, Hip Hop's 49th birthday, we did it there. And just on a side note, just on a side note as well, I was looking at some of the comments uh, on online, and of course I can't help but laugh, but let me deal with some of this. Uh, just as a, a broad view, because, you know, some people were asking, you know, where was some of the other uh, pioneering hip hoppers and where, you know, like, for instance, where was Coke LaRock? Uh, where was this one and that one? And shout out to Coke LaRock, too, and Pebbly Poo and Debbie D and Tony Tone from the Coke Crush. But they say, you know, where was the rest of the pioneers that, that were actually there? Now, of course, I know that people are just they they saw the clip. And so they just go on by the clip. They looking at the clip. They see the mayor. They see me. They see Kaz. And, you know, we're cutting that cake. You're like, what the hell is this going on? Um, but what it was, was this is our work. And I say this respectfully. You guys got to hear this. This is, this, is, this is the truth as well. This is another truth, okay? The work that the Temple of Hip Hop does to preserve hip hop and and further develop it as a divinely inspired culture, that's not um, supported by all the pioneers. You should know that. From the time the Temple of Hip Hop started, all the pioneers did not support the Temple of Hip Hop. All the rappers and breakers and DJs and graffiti writers and beatboxers, they, they didn't support the Temple of Hip Hop. Most were afraid of it. Others felt that I was trying to be above everybody as a temple. They all had it wrong. But in the end, what it is is that we continue to do our work. And our work is not glamorous. Our work is not for, to be on, on a TV screen or phone, you know, whatever. Be on the internet bragging about our work. We don't do that. So this is why these explanations are not out there. We do the work. Temple, temple members that were there that day, you saw the work getting done. And you participated, too, in the work. Nobody was there trying to get their photo, although we did get photos. But, you, you, you know, what, what I was so proud of with our temple members that were there was that we weren't starstruck. We were there doing work. So just so you guys know, as, as well, just on that, on that other part, about, oh, why was it there more pioneers? Why was it duh, 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 duh? Because the temple of hip hop is doing work to preserve hip hop. Most of the pioneers do not support hip hop's preservation. That's just the truth. That's why hip hop is in the state that it's in. And why I even started a temple of hip hop back in 96, because I saw Nobody's really caring about hip hop. And I say this respectfully, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying it, I'm not criticizing our pioneers or any of that, but you have to know the truth. You say, why wasn't there more pioneers involved? Because when we put the call out, everybody decided to show up when they wanted to. I'll give you another example. When we was at the, we, we was the day before August 10th, uh, we went to go see the tax crew. Uh, Bio, um, BG, uh, and uh, NYSA. Actually, it was just um, Bio and NYSA was there, um, so on. But we went to go see them because, you know, we're doing the 1520 exhibit and so on, and we're using art. We're using graffiti writing, gra uh, graffiti art. We're using that as, as, the, as the core focus of our visual, of, of our graphics, is, is graffiti art. So it's important, or it was important, that we went to the tax, uh, to the tax crew, and said, uh, and asked, would you help us put together fifty murals uh, depicting classical scenes, historical scenes? So we went there, and they agreed. Yes, uh, this is this is what it is. Now, my story. The reason I'm telling you this is because while I was at this place called the Point, which is tax crew's headquarters, the Point in the Bronx. There was a Native American dude there, black man, and he was doing Native American art and, and, and jewelry. And I said, yo, I immediately gravitated like, yo, what you doing? What's up? And it's so funny because I'll tell you how the mind works. We was already studying the Native Americans that were in the Bronx before it was called the Bronx, before Jonas Bronx 
signed his treaty or took these people's land and said he had a treaty with them. Before Jonas Bronk, there were Native American nations all along what is now called the Hudson River and Bronx and, you know, Brooklyn, the whole New York area. He was there. Now, I'm studying this. The day, you know, we, we, maybe, you know, the 7th, 8th, 9th, we're studying Native American culture in the Bronx. I get to the point, there's the Native American and there's the Bronx. He says, I am a descendant. First of all, he said, I'm from Virginia, but my nation is a descendant of the, of the, uh, of the uh, uh, Indians or uh, indig Aboriginals, indigenous culture uh, of the Bronx. And then he I said, well, can you speak on that? He said, yes, I can speak on that. So I said, well, look, what I'll do is, you know, we'll compensate you to come and bless the event. First, before anything starts, come with the Native American blessing on the event. He even said, I'm hip hop straight up. I said, this is a great thing. Meet me tomorrow, August 11th. August 11th comes tomorrow. He never shows up. Now, his, his, his excuse was, or you know, the reason was that um, he said there was a flood. Uh, his, the day he, when he woke up, his house flooded. <laughs> now that could be true, and I'm not saying could be true, if true or not true, a flood in your house is crazy, okay? Uh, and anybody dealing with a flood, you know that's a problem, okay? Straight up and down, that's a problem. Um, so, so I mentioned this to say, I mentioned this to say that even though you meet people and you talk to people and you, um, you know, you, you, try to, you try to organize with people, Things happen and people don't show up. They don't show up. When you're doing the work, okay, you don't get everything you want. You get whatever the work can, whatever the work provides for that moment. So we had this Native American dude who's supposed to come through. He never showed up. But guess what? When we went and did the Cedar Park event, he was there. I said, okay, I'll leave that alone. You know, I, I, I'll, 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 I'll leave that alone. Um, the same day, the same day, another, another incident, a, a lighter incident. Um, I was really looking forward to uh, 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 the, um, the tribute and honoring of the crash crew. We were supposed to tribute and honor the crash crew that day. But I guess the way the day went, it never happened as well. Or at least I, I did. I, you know, it wasn't part of a major ceremony. Crash crews there. <clears throat> In fact, I don't even think any of the other members were there. I think it was just Reggie Reg. Matter of fact, it was just Reggie Reg uh, that, that that was there. Um, and, and 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 that's what it was. Maybe we'll catch up with that. Cause I still want to honor the crash crew, even though Perry. I don't know if you're listening or not, but that was a major. That that was that was big when you brought it to us and said, I'd like to honor the crash crew right then and there. Um, that's why we said, yes, let's do that uh, at 1520, August 11th. Let's honor the crash crew. Um, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen. And differently, because they were there, but the way everything went, the, the way things were going down, it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. So... Again, you know, we called everybody as well. Other people, not everybody, but we called a few people. People knew. But you get there when you can get there. You get there when you don't want to get there. You get there when, you know, whatever it is. So what the public gets to see is just the clips. Clip, clip, clip. Little video goes out. Two minutes of a full 16-hour day. <laughs> you get two minutes. And then, then the people who are watching make judgments on those two minutes. <laughs> the point is, is that I'm explaining this to you so that you understand what the work is versus what we look like on camera. So Grandmaster Kaz was there and I was there and Curtis Blow was there and Reggie Reg was there. 
that's hip hop. Popmaster Fables was there, that's hip hop. We're in 1520, the birthplace of hip hop. We didn't need nobody else. Anything else is grandstanding and oh, Coke La Rock is here for what? So that we can say Coke La Rock is here? We don't do that. We know these people for real. These are our real brothers and sisters. We shake hands, eat with them, smoke with them. This is our real brothers and sisters. We're not fans. Respectfully. We are family. So if you don't see a pioneer in what the Temple of Hip Hop is doing, chances are either we are representing all of them because we're in constant contact with all the pioneers. Constant contact. So either we're representing all of them in what we are doing <clears throat> or they themselves decided not to participate. Either way, we still do the work. We're not here to grandize on the camera standing next to Cool Herc so we can say what? We somebody? That's not what we're doing here. So I do understand, uh, I do understand, um, you know, the look and say, well, why was it there more pioneers? Well, because it was a temple of hip hop event for temple members. <laughs> And for those of 15, 20 Sedgwick Avenue, and of course I invited the mayor, and let me tell you what, why that went down too, real quick. <clears throat> first of all, um, first of all, we invited, well, first of all, shout out to Miss Gloria, who's the president of the Tenant Association at 1520. If you don't have her respect, if you don't have her respect, you can forget 1520. You can forget doing anything in there. Respect, not money. I didn't pay to go. I didn't pay to get in there. I did hook the super up real quick, put something in his pocket. My man William, no doubt. That's the super of the building. He the one who got to clean up. He the one who was with Pascal banging, putting stuff up on, on the walls. If you don't know the super, of 1520, if you don't know the Tenant Association, shout out to Miss Davis, is another member of the Tenant Association. If you don't know Mr. John Crotty, he's the owner of the building, okay? These are the people that you have to have their respect and their trust in order to even do an event like this. So we start with that. This is not a money thing. This is not, eventually we're gonna need some money, of course, but not right now. Mm -mm. Not, not, not at the top. At the top, it's about respect. It's about honor. It's about trust. It's about integrity, authenticity. These are the principles that you deal with first. And this is why we're at 1520. Now, I mentioned the mayor. So I called up the mayor. Well, actually, I'm sorry. I didn't call the mayor. John Crotty called for Chuck Schumer and the mayor. Uh, he just was putting calls out uh, and so on. It just so happened that Mayor Eric Adams, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, he had declared himself a hip hop mayor in front of the Universal Hip Hop Museum, um, you know, some weeks, uh, well, some days earlier, like the, the week before he was the hip hop mayor in front of the Universal Hip Hop Museum. So, of course, the Temple of Hip Hop took notice to that and said, you a, you a hip hop mayor? So John Crotty and everyone approached the mayor, approached the senator, uh, uh, approached uh, the Bronx Borough president, Vanessa uh, Gibson, approached them and threw it over to Simone, threw it over to her to organize. So Simone then got on with the mayor's office, Vanessa, I see some Vanessa, I'm talking to her like she's a homegirl. This is the Bronx Borough president, Miss Vanessa L. Gibson, okay? Um, so Simone's on the phone with her and the, the mayor's office and, and so on. Um, and it just so happens that Chuck Schumer couldn't come. Obviously, you can turn on the TV and see why he can't come uh, with all the politics going on, but he couldn't show up. But they did send representatives and other representatives came as well. I can't remember all these people's names. But what was important, here's the importance of why the mayor was there and so on. One, 
the year before this, okay, 2021, August 11th, 2021, we was all at 1520 again. And we was declaring, uh, well, not even declaring, we was putting forward what is called SR-335. SR State Senate Resolution 335, which outlines, uh, it, it's, it's a really um, uh, powerful document. It was written wrong, and there's all types of errors in it, but the premise of the, of the document is that the Senate, the Bronx, and New York recognizes hip hop uh, as culture, recognizes it throughout the nation as like they also added like the variations of hip hop, you know, drill and hyphy and, you know, other trap, uh, other music genres, so to speak. Uh, they did mention that. So SR-335 was put forward and it also had a provision where it says government should be putting money into hip hop programs, which was the real good piece of this, this legislation that government is, is being mandated to put money into hip hop programs. Now, just because you put something on paper don't mean it's real. Don't mean anybody going to do anything. If you put something on paper, you have to follow up. If you make a law or a standard, you have to enforce that law or that standard. Laws are nothing. Standards mean nothing. Principles mean nothing if they're not enforced or even recognized or respected even. So the Temple of Hip Hop did the work again. Nobody was thinking about hip hop on August 11th, 2022. Nobody was even thinking about it. We all got there, took the picture, stood around, and then the next day we went to work. Everybody disappeared, everybody had something else to do, this, that, and the other. Six months in, we're still asking, yo, what's going on with August 11th? Nobody got no answers. So we said, well, we're gonna do August 11th. Hit Gloria, Miss Gloria up, hit Miss Davies, hit Mr. Crotty, hit William, hit Ev, Mr. Will, hit everybody and said, yo, let's come in here and preserve this and bring light to this. And so remember, they were there last year too. So they remember the whole thing. So we all got together. It was us that got together. And we said, let's throw an event for Hip Hop's 49th birthday because nobody's doing anything. Everybody talking, but nobody's really doing anything. Nobody's spending no money. And so we went, spent our money, okay? We spent thousands, okay? Spent our money. We put our, 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 our calls out to make sure that SR-335 as well is respected and recognized. We had it up on the wall when we were there, uh, August 11, 2022. We put all of our proclamations up. So, First, this was the political continuity of that moment. Then, you bring in government officials because it's a government document, SR-335, plus Mayor Eric Adams said, I'm a hip-hop mayor. We said, okay, let's take a look at that, which was a great thing. Wow, finally, New York has a mayor that, represents, that recognizes hip hop. What a, what, a what a difference from Mayor Koch <laughs> with his war on hip hop, okay, to Mayor Eric Adams talking about graffiti writers should get the sanitation contract to clean up the graffiti in the city. If you're going to put the graffiti up, you should be the one who gets the contract to bring the graffiti down. I thought that was brilliant, brilliant. Not that we graffiti writers want to be, you know, siding with the cops against graffiti. No, we're not doing that. But what we're talking about is millions of dollars and jobs going to graffiti writers. That if you a graffiti writer, the city of New York can open a budget and, uh, open, and, and open a budget through sanitation, let's say. 
through sanitation, they open a budget that says, look, if you a graffiti writer, there's programs here. Learn how to do your art. Let Cope 2 and the tax crew and these dudes teach you. Pay them to teach you to grab. Pay them to produce graffiti documentaries and make graffiti writers uh, uh, prominent in our culture like rappers are. Let the city of New York, through a sanitation budget, provide that for us. The way, the way recording companies provided financial support and distribution to rappers, to MCs and DJs, is the same way another entity with some money and some distribution could come in on graffiti art, could come in on b-boy and breaking, could come in on 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 beatboxing and street fashion. Our other thing, there's other ways that we could pull down resources to support our culture. I thought what Eric Adams was, Mayor Eric Adams was saying was brilliant. And I wanted to follow up with him on that. In addition to that, we went to Tony Touch that night. And of course I rocked the mic that night with the mayor right there. He had his Adidas track suit on. He came through with his, his security detail and all of that and enjoyed the show. In the, in the company of hip hop. All type of stars in the building. No, this is a new day for hip hop now. This is a new day. We're not criticizing and pointing fingers and this, that, and the other. No, we're not doing that. What we're doing is we're going to, to grow up. When I was young and a kid, I was in the four and the five trains, in the four and the five yards, sorry. Well, the train, the four train, five train, six train. We were hitting the train straight up, hitting the buses. When I was 20, when I was 21, when I was 22, when I'm 19, I got the can, I'm putting my name up, I'm getting fame. Now I'm 50. I'm still out there on the four and the five train getting arrested for graffiti, come on, let, let's, come on. But I'm still a writer, I'm still an artist, what do I do? Not only that, I'm a graffiti writer, straight up and down, but I'm in my 50s. So what do I do? Join a gang at 50 that's gonna go and bomb the trains and terrorize the bus yards? At 50, that's what I'm supposed to be doing? Or am I supposed to be trying to make a better way for all graffiti writers that have come after me? Young writers who are going through the same problems I went through at 20. You mean to tell me at 50 I can't make nothing better? Well, we're going to make something better. And it starts off with, if there's an opportunity over there through the mayor's office, go get it. Go get it. Help your people. Help your people. We're not going into, into, you know, the mayor's office or, or, or uh, 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 you know, whatever, senator, whoever. We're not, going, we're not going there asking them for money for us. We're not going there asking them stupid, dumb questions like, you know, well, what can you do for hip hop? Uh, hip hop rappers are, uh, you know, rap. No, we're going to come with a real plan. Breaking MC and graffiti are DJ and beatboxing, street fashion, street language, street knowledge, and street entrepreneurialism. Nine elements New York can you provide. Hip hop was born in New York. If we don't have a relationship with the mayor of New York of a city where hip hop is born in, then what work are we doing? We're grandizing, standing up, taking a photo with another celebrity so we can say what? Oh, I was standing next to uh, th this one. Oh, I got a photo with that one. For what? What? <laughs> okay, fine. The photo is good. I got tons of photos with icons and rappers and so on. But where's the work? Who's doing the work? And that's what I want to emphasize. That's what I want to emphasize at the beginning of our call. The work. So that's why we was there. Of course, it was hip-hop's 49th birthday, so we were there, too, to announce the future. 
which is Hip Hop 50 Years. We're coming up on Hip Hop's 50 Years. And so we announced our exhibit and, and christened it right there. Shit, we gave ourselves a year to get the exhibit off. So, and, and garner support. So this is why we were there. It had nothing to do with whether pioneers were there or not. It had nothing to do with that. Obviously, our usual suspects are always there. Usual suspects are always there. But that's hip hop. That's hip hop. Kaz is going to be there. Reggie Reg going to be there. Curtis Blow going to be there. And these are hip hop's historians too, by the way, which is why they were also in invited uh, um, um, in invited as well. This is why they were invited as well. Because Curtis Blow, for one, is, is straight up history. Straight up hip hop history. Grandmaster Kaz, straight up hip hop history. Popmaster Fables, straight up hip hop history. So we are representing all of our friends, our family, our community. All of us don't have to show up and be on a camera. We just have to get the work done. Okay. Um, speaking of getting the work done, we're gonna we're gonna look now uh, at the gospel of hip hop. Man, these lights are baking me, but I'm gonna get through it. Um, I'm gonna get through it. So, 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 uh, let me just clear my glasses real quick. Hey, see my shirt? See your shirt? They came before Columbus. Shout out to Dr. Ivan von Sertema. Woo, what a mind that was. Oh, man, or is. Um, Dr. Ivan von Sertema, I ain't gonna get into his lecture, but these are the Almecs. Uh, this is the uh, Africans, uh, Ethiopians, Africans, Ethiopians um, in Mexico, <laughs> in, in South America. Uh, these big balsamic heads are over uh, over two or three thousand years old, 1500 BC. Some are 1400 years ago and others are 1400 BC. Imagine how long then this has been going on. And this proves Africans in South America before Columbus, before the Vikings, before a lot of people. So here we are. And I just got this on today because it's, I just have this on today. <laughs> so turn your, your gospel now. Um, and, and let me just put a period on that 1520 that you guys should know as well that, you know, as a temple for hip hop, doing the work, we're not um, trying to preserve, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, KRS-One's BDP jacket or LL Cool J's Kango hat or Run DMC's uh, Adidas. You know, we're, 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 we're not, um, uh, let me get that. We're, 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 we're not, um, preserving that. What we're doing is, well, let me, I gotta say this too. Let me just, let me just say it. Ah, oh, man. Cause every concept that I bring up, I have to make sure you understand what I'm talking about. So musology, okay. The preservation of objects. Musology is all about object. It's all about the interpretation and preservation and collecting of objects. When you go to a museum, you have objects. This, that, this one's sneaker, this one's hat, this one's coat, uh, some kind of material culture is what they call it. Material culture. Culture is not material, but it produces things that, 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 um, that, that it produces things that define it. So, to talk about culture, most times people deal with material culture. Here's the actual shoe. This is the actual gun. Here's the shield. Here's the clothes. And they interpret this for a museum visiting audience. We as museologists are preserving hip hop. Now the Universal Hip Hop Museum is preserving hip hop's material culture. It wants to collect all the pieces that explains hip hop's history uh, materially. 
the temple of hip hop teaches that hip hop is not a, uh, an object. Hip hop is a subject. Hip hop does not enter the, the, the physical world. Hip hop does not come into physical world at no time. The only time hip hop becomes physical is when we say we are it. When we say I am hip hop, then hip hop becomes us. We are hip hop in the physical world. But other than that, there is no place to go that is called hip hop. There is nothing to eat that's called hip hop, something to wear that's called hip, something to touch uh, that's called hip hop. Hip hop is a mental, a mental experience, even ability, but a mental experience. So in with musology, the temple of hip hop is preserving the traditions, customs, techniques of hip hop. Not LL Cool J's hat or KRS-One's BDP jacket. No, we're preserving uh, uh, how you made the jacket. <laughs> uh, the techniques for, for, for how, how, how the jacket gets made, that's what we're preserving. We're preserving um, the history of Kango, the, the company that made LL Cool J's hat. We're preserving why LL wore that hat. Not the hat, but LL, why'd you wear that hat? Who inspired you? Where did that style come from? That's what we're preserving. Others are doing the material culture of hip hop. We are doing the immaterial culture, or we're just doing the culture of hip hop, which is its traditions, its language, its customs, its fashion, what it thinks of itself, these things, history even. This is what the temple of hip hop is focused upon. Now, that's not to say that we ain't gonna put KRS's BDP jacket up or LL Cool J's hat. If we have these items, then we'll put them out. And in fact, let me be real real with you. The one material item that we are preserving as a temple for hip hop the one item that we are preserving of hip hop's material culture is 1520 Sedgwick Avenue itself. The building itself is what we are preserving. Other museums, they have a hundred items that they're preserving. We have only one, 1520 Sedgwick Avenue in the Bronx. The community center, the building itself, this is what we're preserving. So be clear with it, be clear with it. This is the flyer, uh, you can't really see it, I guess, but you know, we did this flyer. Shout out to Caesar Ngabo uh, from Kenya. This is Africa, you looking at, this is Africa doing the art. Um, shout out to my man, he blew it out uh, on, 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 on this piece right here. He, 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 he blew it out. Hope y'all can see that. Okay, take a look at that. All right? Look at that. Got it? Okay. This is, this is um, Ngabo's art. And, um, you know, when I first saw the picture, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, look at that. And look at it. I'm, of course, KRS-One is in the front talking to Biggie. Uh, you can see that, that, that there. But I didn't know that. And I didn't, I wasn't consulted on this, nothing. This is just an African uh, artist uh, drawing, doing his thing. Uh, and you should look up his other art. He got other stuff, uh, this brilliant stuff. But he too, uh, we reached out to him as part of, as an artist for this exhibit. And of course he said, I'm down. We got to talk further, you know, get into the details. But as, as far as talent is concerned, we're surrounding ourselves with top-notch artists. Shout out to Desire One. I see you, Desire. And I didn't forget our conversation as well about graffiti writers in Miami, Florida, the Graffiti Art Museum, all of that. We still have that conversation. We're early. We're early in our, in our uh, exhibit uh, construction, but I ain't forget about that conversation. So Desire, I just want you to know that. Um, and you should also uh, be moving as well um, on, on trying to make this exhibit real. Desire it was, was there, those that, that know uh, Desire uh, came in and was with us August 11th, 2020, 
uh, to uh, lifting boxes and doing tables and putting chairs in place and doing the work, doing the work. Uh, shout out to everybody else, temple members that were there as well. But I'm uh, putting the emphasis on desire because we had a conversation about graffiti writing uh, and, and uh, graffiti art and the exhibit and the graffiti art. And then, of course, the graffiti art museum in that sense, you know, all, all, all of that. So anyway, um, so anyway, that's that's really it. Um, let's let's get into our read. Let's get into our read uh, right now. Turn your your gospel Turn your gospel to page uh, 627. We have read 627 pages. We read 626 pages, y'all, of our gospel of hip hop. You should pat yourself on the back right now. <laughs> we got through 626 pages. And hopefully we're learning something. Hopefully we're learning something. So what we're talking about here today with our gospel of hip hop is we're discussing God and we're up to track three on God. We're discussing God, the nature of God. Like I opened this, this talk up today with who gives you your concept of God? Who, where do you get your mental imagery of spirituality from? Are you really spiritual? Or are you being duped by a colonial government? Are you really praying, praying, and are you really praying to God? Or are you praying to a colonial ancestor? This is what hip hoppers have to pay attention to. This is what we gotta pay attention to. What is who what is our concept of God? And Track three goes into it from a philosophical point of view. Now, I say philosophical because I'm going to lay out some philosophical terms right here. You may want to underline some of these. I might not um, uh, highlight these. Matter of fact, we're not going to highlight them. But this first part that we're getting ready to read of track three is a philosophical approach to God, to the concept of God, to the concept of divinity. So let's start the read. Because of the Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, New Age, New Thought, Buddhist, Wicca, and even atheist popularity within the inner cities of the United States, hip hoppers have approached their concept of God in the same way that they, we, have approached our, or their, our music production. I get this. We have sampled a variety of faith to discover a spiritual experience that seems to work for us. Let me say it again. We have sampled, like the way we do our music is how we approach spirituality as a culture. We sampled a little James Brown, but we threw a Sly and the Family Stone snare on it with uh, a, a, a hi-hat or bass line by the meters. And now you got this thing going on here. Samples, samples to make something new. Take a little of this, this, and this to make something brand new that was none of these. We have sampled a variety of faiths to discover a spiritual experience that seems to work for us. In my time, hip hop has seemed to approach God as a conscious mind present in human beings and physical nature, the source of all life and values. That's called theism. T-H-E-I-S-M. Theism. These are philosophical concepts and titles. Uh, this is philosophy we're discussing right now. We're approaching God from the from the from the titles and um, you know the names of philosophy. What philosophy gives to various forms of recognizing a deity, recognizing divinity. The first one we deal with is theism. What is theism? Here we go again. Hip hop is seen to approach God as a conscious mind present in human beings and physical nature, the source of all life and values. That's called theism. Again, moving on, paragraph 141 now. We are not God, 
yet our higher selves, yet in our higher selves, we are God. That's called humanism. Let me hit you with it again. We are not God, yet in our higher selves, we are God. Humanism. And notice the, the, uh, the spellings here as well. Uh, we are not G, capital G, O, D. We are lowercase, uh, capital G, lowercase, O, D. We are, we, we are the God. We become God in God. We are not God. But in our higher selves, we are God. That's called humanism. And keep in mind, I'm giving you these titles and these, na these names, uh, these designations uh, for you to further do further work on this, do do further study on this uh, as 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 well. Look up theism and get more of it. I'm I'm skimming the surface, but look up theism, get to get it. Look up humanism and get that as well. Collectively, we believe this is another one now. Collectively, we believe in the one supreme Creator that is called by many names a self-existent spirit that is the source of all creation, monotheism. We also believe that God is separate from the world, deism, yet we also believe God to emanate through and as nature, still, reminding, uh, still remaining distant from it. Let me hit you with that again. There's, there's two, there's deism, and panatheism. Let's, let's look at it. We also believe that God is, is separate from the world, deism. Yet we also believe God to emanate through and as nature, still remaining dis, distant, uh, distinct from it. Still remaining distinct from it. it. It comes through it, but it is distinct from it. That's panatheism. Panin. As it was panentheism. Hip hoppers also believe that God is unknowable, agnostic realism. Make sure you get these, you get all of these titles going down. Hip hoppers also believe that God is unknowable. That's called agnostic realism. Yet we realize, I'm sorry, yet we rely upon our intuitive apprehension of spiritual truth. That's Gnosticism. To understand the activity of God. Let me hit you with that one more time. Hip hop is also believed that God is unknowable. That's agnostic realism. Yet we rely upon our intuitive apprehension of spiritual truth. That's called Gnosticism. Spiritual truth to understand the activity of God. Overall, hip hoppers collectively believe all of this at the same time. As a, as a culture and a community, we believe in all of this. We have found the way that harmonizes most of the world's approaches to God. This is the beauty of hip hop. All of what I just said to you, okay, look at what, what, what we just went, went, went through. Theism, humanism, monotheism, deism, panentheism, Agnostic realism, Gnosticism, okay, and we're we going to go on. Look these words up and get further knowledge on them. Because these have been the philosophical approaches to God, to the understanding of God. Now let's highlight 144, 145. We're going to highlight 144 and 145. Here we go. Some hip hoppers lean more toward one or another of these approaches toward God, but collectively the modern hip hop spiritual experience manages to harmonize all of the above isms and more. For us Templars, spirituality is about becoming all that we are intended to be. To be. We approach God through the symbolism and natural history of hip hop. Let me say that one more time. We approach God through the symbolism and natural history of hip hop. 
As attuned hip hoppers, templars, hip hop is practiced as a particular way of seeing the world, oneself, and others. A particular way of seeing the world, seeing yourself, and seeing others. This is, a this is our spirituality. That's why we're, we're highlighting it. Highlight 144 and 145. One forty four, one forty five paragraphs, one forty four, paragraph one forty five. Generally, hip hoppers read the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, the Bhagavad Gita, the teachings of Buddha, and other spiritual teachings all at the same time. Hip hoppers practice yoga and read all sorts of new age and new thought materials. We seem to have developed our understanding of spiritual reality from the combination of all of these paths. All of these paths, teachings, and holy texts. Yet, as a way of life, we belong to none of them exclusively. It is like we hip hoppers read these texts not to become them, but to search and develop the spirit that we already feel inside. We don't read these texts to find out about God. We read these spiritual texts to confirm the God in us. It is like, and say it again. Uh, it is like we hip hoppers read these texts not to become them, but to search and develop the spirit that we already feel inside. Generally, we look for ourselves and our understanding of God within spiritual texts. We look for ourselves and we look for our understanding of God when we read in the Bible, the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, the baskets of Buddha, uh, whatever, the Upanishads, whatever you got in front of you, the Torah. Whatever you got in front of you as a hip hopper, you're not necessarily Jewish if, if you're reading the Torah. You're not necessarily Jewish or Christian if you're reading the Bible. But you read the Bible because the, the character and the stories of the Bible, really all holy texts, are timeless stories. So you could find yourself, you could find your hip hop, you could see hip hop in the stories of any holy text. Any. It's, it's just a matter of what you want to see. It's just a matter of, you know, what do you respect? And can you see it in the Holy Bible? Can you see it in the Quran? Can you see it in the Torah? Can you see it? Like, can you see it? But no, if, if you say, oh, hip hop ain't, hip -hop ain't shit. <laughs> hip hop ain't nothing. It's just a music genre, a bunch of it, it, whatever. Then of course, when you pick up the Bible, you don't see hip hop in it. Because your own convictions of what you think hip hop is, is not holy. So you don't even equate hip hop with the Torah. You don't even equate hip hop with the Bhagavad Gita. You don't even equate it because of your own convictions. How you feel about hip hop is blocking you from realizing the spiritual nature of it. For hip hop is God and Satan, angels and demons are actually the character and actions of human beings themselves. Commonly, because of the influence of the five percenters, hip hoppers have called themselves gods and their oppressors devils. However, hip hop Hip hoppers are less concerned with proving the actual existence of God as we are more concerned with the usefulness of the term God in our everyday lives. What does the term God mean to us? Let's highlight this next one. Gotta highlight um, 149. Highlight paragraph 149. Highlight paragraph 149, here's why. The temple of hip hop speaks of God, not only as the love that guides and protects us, but also as an event, a happening, a cosmic intelligence that the true you is indeed an event of. You are an event in an event. You are God's force operating in the material world and the force that is operating in and upon the material world is God. The very realm or environment which we spirit beings live within is an aware and intelligent being itself. 
It is conscious. It is a conscious happening of going on a living event. Now ponder it. That's why this will highlight that whole thing. 149 and 150. Sorry, 149 and 150. Highlight that. This is the peace right here. This is the enlightenment right here, right? This, especially 150. Look at this. The very realm or environment which we spirit beings live within is an aware and intelligent being itself. It is a conscious happening of going on a living event. Do you, can you comprehend the concept of a living event? Like imagine, like, you know, a wedding is an event. A wedding is an event. Imagine the wedding, the event, being conscious. Uh, imagine being able, uh, 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 imagine be, being able to, um, uh, imagine going to fix your car. It's an event. The car broke down. The tow truck is on the way. You're going to a garage. La, 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 la. Now imagine that event. The car broke down. The concept or the event of the car breaking down and you called the tow truck. All of that going on is conscious and aware. I, I, I'm trying to find the words to explain this to you because a lot of spirituality cannot be explained in words. So this is this is where the skill of the teacher got to come forward. And and what I'm trying to express here is a level of being, a level of consciousness that is real and true. And this is what hip hop is. It's a conscious event. This is what we also call God, the conscious event. The event is conscious. Life, the life circumstances, the events of life are like people, like beings. The ancients used to, used to um, you know, personify. They call it pers the, pers the personification of principles. So like you got something like justice. Justice is not a tangible physical thing. It's a concept, justice. But what the ancients did, especially Greeks and Romans, is they made justice a woman. And let me throw the Egyptians in there too with ma'at, which is really where it comes from. But, you know, uh, ma'at, balance, justice, um, you know, that, that, you know, balance, justice, and so on. Uh, but balance and justice is not a person. <laughs> uh, balance and justice is not a person. But to teach young kids, to teach a population, you say balance and justice is called a woman, is a woman named Ma'at. Now you can, you can focus in on something. It's not so elusive. And can you understand what I'm saying? No. Let me draw it out for you. Let me graffiti write this for you real quick so your eye can see the ideas that I have in my mind. I'm trying to convey an idea to you. But I, the idea to idea is not getting through. You're not in my head and I'm not articulating this right. So let's draw a picture of what I'm thinking. Now you can see what I'm thinking. How brilliant was the first artist to even come up with that? Like, how do you even come up with putting your thoughts into physical reality on a piece of paper? Imagine that. Imagine the first hip hoppers, hip hoppians, homo hip hoppiensis, early hip hoppers, with the ability to make what's on their mind physical. And the way they did it was through art. <laughs> wow. Sun One and I was talking about a concept he was studying um, about some ancient, an ancient concept about being able to speak, write, or speak or sing, or write your, your reality into, into manifestation. 
speak, sing your reality into manifestation or write it or draw it. The art you draw becomes the reality. The, your art becomes a living event. If you can raise your, your consciousness to this level where you understand that what I'm doing right now, this temple call is a divine event. It is conscious of itself. This event knows that it is doing this. You can appeal to this event. You can say, event, I need you to go this way. I, I would like this. Or, what do you need of me? Event, where are you going? Can you reveal to me what you're doing? You can talk to your day. We talked about this in the seventh overstanding about the day is in you. The day is not out here. You can speak to the consciousness of your day and tell your day what you want it to be. You'll be amazed at what the day offers you. Don't you realize, or you should realize, that when you wake up in the morning, when you first wake up, you're at the peak of your energy. Most people don't think about this. That the reason you go to sleep and sleep and rest is so that the body can recharge. And what is it that the body recharges on? Chi, prana. It's up my back, it's around my neck. Woo-ha, got them all in check. What's up your back and around your neck? This energy. What is this? Uh, what is that? Energy. What is the tick, 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 tick? What is that? Energy. Chi, prana, hip hop. When you go to sleep and you wake up, when you go to sleep, you, you collect prana. You collect the chi. You, you collect, you charge your, your chakras, you charge your energy centers. So when you wake up, the minute you wake up, you are at the peak of your, your spiritual energy. Here's how it leaves you. Your spiritual energy leaves you through your mouth. Through your mouth. Your words are the waste product of the energy you received the night before. You've eaten energy while sleep. When you wake up, the defecation of that energy, the waste of the energy is words. Your voice, your words. You're literally talking shit. <laughs> You're talking spiritual shit. You're defecating through the mouth. So at the very beginning, when you wake up in the morning with spiritual light on you, pay attention to the first words coming out your mouth. The very first word. This is going to set your day. This is going to set your day. The very first words that come out your mouth. And it's a practice. It's a practice. Most of us wake up and we go to use the restroom in the morning. Wake up, go to the bathroom. On your way to the bathroom, what is the, what's the first thing out your mouth? Most of us don't even think about it. In fact, most of us wake up to the phone. Phone ringing. Brrr. You wake up to the phone. First thing out your mouth. First spiritual. You with all your prana, with all your energy. Yo, what's up? Yo, I need you down here at the office. Yo, listen, give me a half hour. hour. I'll be there in a minute, yo. This is what you're doing with spiritual energy. Wake up in the morning to argument. First words out your mouth. Motherfuck, fuck, man. I don't lie about. 
wake up in the morning. First thing, first spiritual words, the kids. Mommy, daddy, mommy, mommy, daddy, I don't want this, I want that, I want the other. And then you say, you say, the kids yell it, so you have to respond. How do you respond? Okay, look, pick up that toy. Get over here and eat. Go take a shower. This is now your, this is the first thing out your mouth. Your first, this is your spiritual talk. You got to be careful about this. Got to be careful with this. You are a God. The first words out your mouth are usually going to manifest the rest of your day. Remember that and be careful with what you say at the beginning when you first, first wake up, when you first wake up, have an affirmation on your mouth when you first wake up. I usually wake up to health, love, awareness, and wealth. Praise God for another day. And I go on with my day. Peace and prosperity. These are the words you say every day. You know, whatever your goals are, when you first wake up in the morning, what what exactly are, are, are your goals? When you first wake up in the morning, what are your goals? Yo, I'm trying to be the greatest MC of all time. I want to be dope. I want to be an MC. I want to I wanna DJ. I want to make sure I'm getting money DJing. I want to get out here and do my thing. Well, when you wake up in the morning, confirm that. out The first thing out your mouth when you wake up, mm, what is the first utterance? It should be your goals. It should be your vision. It should be health, love, awareness, and wealth onto yourself and others around you. This is what this should be your first words, not words of doubt, not words of fear, not words like you want a donut, you want a cup of coffee. I'm gonna go. Th these, <laughs> this is not what you use your spiritual energy for. So, so, um, uh. Highlight 149 and 150. This is a very important uh, paragraph. The environment is conscious. Speak to the environment. Learn the secret language of the environment. Let's continue. This being, God, is actually a great cosmic event which loves us because it is love itself. It cares for us, teaches us, and feeds us because it, the great event, the great oneness deity, guiding our direction. You get that? Great oneness deity, God, guiding our direction, God, is the actual concept of care, of teaching, and of feeding in and of itself. It, God, actually does nothing, yet it actually is everything. It has no activity, yet it is actually the only thing going on daily. Did you hear that? The only thing going on daily. In fact, the term God is not the name of this great event. Did you hear that? The fact, in fact, the term God is not the name of this, of this great event. Neither is great event the name of this great event. All names ascribed to this chaotic oneness event are both false and true. You can call the great event anything you like and it will be true for you. But it will not be the truth. The truth is beyond names, terms, titles, and, and titles. In fact, it is, through, it is through such word symbols as God. That's a word symbol. In fact, it is through such word symbols as God that we organize our perception toward what we believe the G-O-D word symbol to mean. However, in truth, the great event or oneness has no name. It just is. All the names given to this great oneness deity are actually titles and terms that we ascribe to it so that we may talk about specific parts of it. But in reality, there are no specific parts to it. All is one event, the great unified field 
Now keep in mind, it says here, the great unified field, like a field, like, a, like an environment. But really, it's F-E-E-L, feel. The great unified field. But here, for surface knowledge, we put field. Names and terms are for human intelligence. They help us bring order to the seemingly chaotic world in which we live. However, in truth, it is actually impossible to name an event that is not separate from anything else. In fact, when you name the great oneness, you are stopping yourself from experiencing it in and as everything else, including yourself. This act gives the great chaotic oneness the form you desire in the time and space that you are in. You are limiting God to your particular time and space created by your own individual need to survive when in reality, God is everywhere. Take a moment and really try to comprehend the concept of this. All things being one thing. All things being God, including you. Yes, God loves hip-hop. And the good news is that we can have a direct access to God as hip-hoppers. That's the gospel. To know God, we no longer... To know God, we no longer have to rely upon the spiritual symbolism and theological interpretations of others far into our life experiences. Our God is a graffiti writer that writes upon the hearts and minds of all true seekers of truth. Let, let's go ahead and highlight that. Let's go ahead. As a matter of fact, what I want you to do is highlight uh, 156, uh, hi hi highlight 156 uh, and 157. Here's, here's both of them. I just did one. Here's 157. Let us stop disrespecting and doubting our God while praising the gods of other communities far into our life experiences. That's the, that's the key word, our life experiences. We have all the right to approach God according to our life experiences. We don't have to approach God according to other people's life experiences. That's not God. God is now, right now. So what is your life experience right now? We experience God through our life experiences, not through George Washington's life experience, not through Abraham Lincoln's life experiences, not through Jesus' life experiences, not through Buddha's life experiences. None of those life experiences are our life experiences. Our life experiences is right here, right now in the United States and anywhere else you're living, whatever country you're in, I'm in the US. So this is where God is for us. Highlight 56 and 57. By looking within and truly acknowledging the presence of the God that loves us. Like, like oh, wait a minute, let me stop for a minute here. Do you realize that nobody else's God loves us? <laughs> think, think of it, just stop for a minute. And contemplate that. The Christian God does not love us. For us to walk into any Christian church, we have to stop being hip hop and become what they are. The Jewish God don't love us. The, the Muslim God don't love us. The, none of these, every God that we can come to, we have to stop being us to come in, to join their culture, and rightfully so. If you're gonna join a, a synagogue, you better be part of Jewish culture. If you're gonna join a Christian church, you better be part of Christian culture. But what if you're not part of Christian culture? What if you're not part of Jewish culture, Islamic culture, Indian culture? What if you're not that? Well, you're supposed to just not have God then, right? Well, that's how we've been treated for over a hundred years. This is this is what this is how we've been. As a matter of fact, I don't have to say hundred years. Let's say first fifty, <laughs> from seventy three to twenty twenty two to forty nine years, we hip hoppers have been treated as if we have no God unto ourselves. Everybody else took God for themselves and ran into their house. Ran into their church, ran into their synagogue, ran into their mosque, 
ran into their temple and took God with them. We, the youth of the streets, had nothing. And even somebody come along and say, I got God for you. Let me save your soul, young man. Young woman, let me save your soul. How do you save my soul? Well, first you have to give up your life to Jesus Christ. Look at the statement. Give up your life. And follow this, a book, a story. Make this story part of your life, part of your identity. And then you'll have God according to our book only. Because the Muslim will come right there and say, that ain't God. The Allah is God. And if you want to be down with this, I need you to dress like this, talk like this, pray like this. So you mean to tell me I can't have access to Allah unless I read the, the Quran? This universal, loving, they say, merciful God, Allah. I can't have none of that mercy. I can't get to that unless I read your book only. I don't know. I think we need to question that. I think we need to question that. Uh, because here I stand, a street kid from the Bronx, from Brooklyn, from Queens, Staten Island, Manhattan, Harlem. Where's my God? Where's the God that cares for me? I don't think God needs to be in any building. I don't think God, an infinite God is right here. Where is an omnipresent God not? <laughs> Where? No. So if, if God is everywhere and everything, God is the all, the one, the unified force of all existence and reality, then we don't have to read nobody's book to see God. You don't have to read the gospel of hip hop. Just be God. Just recognize the reality of your divinity. Stop doubting it. Stop downplaying it. Believe on your divinity. Believe on God in your midst. That the environment, the very air you're breathing is God. This is God. The water you drink is God. The event of your day is God. You don't need no book for that. You don't need no building for that. You don't need no clothes for that. The original people, our original people were naked. When God was first discovered, we were naked. And I'm not talking about the Christian Adam and Eve story. I'm talking about just in general. The first humans, naked. With nothing. God comes. You don't have to go nowhere, wear nothing, go nothing to experience God. And that's what hip hop has realized. This is what hip hop has realized. Let me hit you with 157 one more time. We're going to hit, well, actually, I don't think I read it. Let, let me hit you with 156 and 157 one more time. We highlight these two. Let me hit you with it one more time. Yes, God loves hip hop. And the good news is that we can have a direct access to God as hip hoppers. Respect the Christians. You know we respect that. Respect the Islam. In fact, shout out Minister Louis Farrakhan on some other level. My dude was with hip hop from day one. Okay. Shout out to the whole nation of Islam and the fruit of Islam who, by the way, protects hip hoppers at many rap concerts and so on. In fact, it was Minister Louis Farrakhan that actually threw a hip hop summit. Shout out to Islam. You know we respect that. You know we respect Christianity. How many Christians are also down with hip hop? Shout out to my dude BBJ. Big up to um, T-Bone. Shout out to uh, Kurt Franklin as well. These are straight hip hoppers doing the work of Christ, doing the work in the church, trying to make their situation better, trying to bring their people to Christ. Ain't nothing 
wrong with that? <laughs> Nothing. That's, that is the way to go. Okay. You know we respect that. Do I have to shout you there, Zim? Do I have to say the Kabbalah is the dopest tree of life ever? <laughs> that tree of life, that Kabbalah. That's ridiculous. Okay, numerology, Jewish mysticism. That stuff is fascinating, okay? Do I have to say Hinduism? The Upanishads? The Bhagavad Gita? What about Ayurveda medicine? What do you think? Hip-hop is a dwarf. Okay, compared to that, six, seven thousand year old religions, six and seven thousand year old religions, four thousand year old religions, two thousand year old religions, whole nations built by them. No, we humble ourselves, hip hop. We humble ourselves before our ancestors, before our predecessors, before our forefathers and mothers. We, we, we humble ourselves. We are not above nobody's religion at all. We are the new thing on the block. We the new kids on the block. That's all. God has chosen a new people. That's it. We recognize God on our lives and we recognize the purity of of God's divinity on our lives. We recognize the love of God in our lives. We recognize that God trusts us to get something done and we are not gonna let God down. We recognize this, but we are young spiritual body. We're a young nation. If you wanna say religion, hip hop as religion, we're a young religion. We're a young philosophy. Let us not be so arrogant as to think we above anybody. That's how you lose. We are the lowest, okay? The most immature and ignorant, okay? We have to get ourselves up to levels of divinity, development, and maturity. That's what we gotta do. Don't be looking at what somebody else got, what somebody else said, what so this church is bigger, that mosque is pretty, this, this, and no. Work on your inner being so that it is respected before the ancestors and before God. Work on your spiritual principles so that when you walk the earth, you can command the dead. This is what hip hop spirituality is. Hip hop is the only American born religion, period. If you approach hip hop as religion, no religion, no major, no global spiritual thought originated in America. The only one is hip hop. If you take hip hop seriously, hip hop is the only spiritual practice organic to the streets of the United States and thus streets everywhere. Hip hop is the spiritual practice of, of hoods everywhere, ghettos everywhere. We teaching our people how to survive and get past oppression everywhere. But here I'm in the United States. And so here in the United States, this gospel of hip hop was published at the turn of the century, 2009, turn of the century. Those who study, you know, the stars and study calendars and study the, the, the progressions of, of the seasons and, and the, the cycles of time. 26,000s and 2,600. You know, those that study that, you know that at the beginning of every new age, we just left the age of Pisces and we're now going into the age of Aquarius. So we, you know that when the ages change, that's when the new thought for the new age comes up. And it's not a conscious thought. It's not like, oh, we're going to do this because uh, it's time to. Nah. It's life itself that determines 
what's going to happen. The circumstances of life itself. Providence is what they call it. Providence. KRS-One is at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue in the Bronx in 1973 when hip-hop started. And his mother took photos of him at the place and wrote on the back, Larry, 1973. Kenny, 1973. On the back. Who told her to do that? How was she inspired? I asked her. She said, I just did it. We read that, you know, we read that last week. She said, I just did it. I wasn't thinking about it, I just did it. This is life. This is life. And most people don't see this until the future. Then they look back and they say, wow, that was miraculous. How did that happen? How did I wind up there? How did I do it? Da, 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 da. But that's in hindsight. That's in hindsight. You know, there's a, there's a poem called Footprints. And, and it's a famous poem that, or, or statement poem, where, where well, the basis of the story is that the person says, I've walked a hundred miles. I've, I've, got, I've traveled a hundred miles and I didn't see you, God. I traveled the whole time and I didn't see you. And then the person turns and says, and I'm, I'm, I'm improvising. The person turns and says, look, the footprints of a of hundred years of walk with you. No, I just walked a hundred years through the pain, through the suffering, through everything. God, where were you? And then God turns around and says, the footprints were mine. <laughs> you were being carried the whole whole time. You thought you were walking? <laughs> you wasn't walking? Those footprints are my footprints. I'm the one who held you and brought you across. Now you gain wisdom. Oh man, it was God the whole time. But now you're 60. <laughs> now you're 70. Okay, you realize. What if you realize that at 20? <laughs> what if at 20 years old you realize, God, you got me right now. I could. I, you got me. That's what I did. That's, that's my story. When I was 16, I said, God, you got me. I know you do. I'm going to leave home, live on the streets. Because I know you with me. And it's been, this, it's been this way ever since. It's been this way ever since. So you got to bring yourself up, develop yourself. Simone says, love and develop yourself, lady. Love and develop yourself. For man, it's lad. Love and develop. <laughs> and of course, yourself. We're dealing with acronyms here. But love and develop yourself, ladies. People, love and develop yourself. That's the whole spiritual path summed up in an acronym. Do you hear this? The whole path summed up in an acronym. Love and develop yourself. This is what this whole thing is about. And you ain't got to go to a building. You ain't got to put on no clothes. You ain't got to eat some food. You ain't got to fast. You ain't got to do none of that. You just have to love and develop you. Make sure you highlight paragraph 156 and 157. Here's 157. Oh, a matter of fact, I'm sorry. Right. I was going to read 156 and 157 again. Yes, God loves hip-hop, and the good news is that we can have a direct access to God as hip-hoppers. To know God, we no longer have to rely upon the spiritual symbolism and theological interpretations of others foreign to our life experiences. Our God is a, is a graffiti writer that writes upon the hearts and minds of all true seekers of truth. Let us stop disrespecting and doubting our God while praising the gods of other communities far into our life experiences. The gospel of hip-hop introduces a, a discipline that commits hip-hoppers to the process of being human and makes hip-hoppers aware that deep within themselves, not a book, 
not a mosque, not a synagogue, not a church, not a rabbi, ma imam, rabbi, none of that. Okay? The gospel of hip-hop introduces a discipline that commits hip-hopers to the process of being human and makes hip-hopers aware that deep within themselves, even beyond the quantum level, beyond science, can be found the answers to the whole puzzle of life itself. In you is the answer to all of life. By looking within and truly acknowledging the presence of the God that loves us, we connect ourselves to our God, which is our health, love, awareness, and wealth, the H law of our lives. Our God is compassionate and nurturing toward the development of hip hop culture, our God is a divine DJ who mixes, cuts, and scratches life itself. The gospel of hip-hop is simply a divine mixtape. And know this, love is the message. What is the message? Love is the message. We teach that one's commitment to one's God begins with one's earnest commitment toward oneself. In one's earnest commitment toward, what, toward the development of oneself, one finally begins to take oneself seriously. This is the beginning of discipline and righteous living. Stop playing games with yourself. Take yourself seriously. Value yourself. For if you do not value and or take yourself seriously, no one else will either, including God. Sometimes you must be reminded that self is beautiful. I should say, sometimes we must be reminded that self is beautiful. Self, you, is indestructible, immeasurable, timeless, enduring. It does not live, self, does not live because the body lives, and it does not die because the body dies. The real you has no name, no ethnicity, no career, and no religion. These are called the coats that you have put on top of, of self to do the work that actualizes your purpose. Even the coat of hip hop is a decision that the real you, self, made to actualize your purpose. Even if you are born hip hop, at some point, you must still decide to be hip hop. The self. The true you is not physical like the body. It, you, lives in a realm where everything is possible. Everything is happening at once. Everything is happening now. It is the true you, the real you, that decides upon the ordered reality in which your physical body is going to live and operate. The real you is spirit, and you exist within the spirit realm, for which human intelligence is a realm of... For, for, which for human intelligence, let me hit, that, hit you with that again. The real, the, the, the self, the true you, is not physical like the body. It, you, lives in a realm where everything is possible. I'm talking about hip-hopia, inner you, the eye that sees without these eyes, the ear that can hear without these ears, the voice that speaks without the mouth, the inner you. Sometimes we got to be reminded that the inner you is beautiful. So, even if you are born hip hop, I'm sorry, no, 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 this is what I want to read. Uh, the real you that decides upon the ordered reality that the phys physical body is going to operate. Look at this. Yeah, look at this. I just want to go back on this. Everything is happening now. It is the true you. It is the true you, the real you that decides upon the ordered reality in which your physical body is going to live and operate. Everything is already here. Science even teaches that, that everything, like real reality, uh, we're not experiencing real reality. We're supposed to be only be experiencing 10 to 12% of our brain. Some argue against that and say, you know, that ain't even true. But if you go with the idea that there is more to reality than what we're experiencing, then then, then, then this, then you could understand what, uh, what this, what this statement, what this sentence actually means. You, that you, the real you, the real you decides upon, you decide 
upon the ordered reality in which your physical body is going to live and operate. The ordered reality. So you order your reality by denying like 90% of it. To see, to focus on one thing, this thing, you have to deny everything else. The real you is spirit, and you exist within the realm, within the spirit, within the spirit realm for which the real you is spirit, and you exist within the spirit realm, which for human intelligence is a realm of chaos where thing where there are no separate things, distance or time. Everything is going on at once. Labels, names, distance, and time do not actually exist here in the spirit realm. These things are created so that we can create the reality that we desire. Keep in mind, there is a spirit realm where everything is possible. And then we approach that realm only according to our consciousness so everything else gets blacked out. Everything else disappears. And what you see is only your consciousness. Everything's going on, but you can't see it because of your own consciousness. The truth is, you are actually a spirit being acting like a human being. And because you choose to be human, you accept the conditions of being human. In fact, this is the essence of the choice that you have made. You have, find, you have voluntarily decided to experience the human condition. This is what makes you human, your decisions. As, as opposed to being God, as opposed to being anything, you decide what you're going to be. But what if you seriously decided to accept a different condition? This is what helping oneself is all about. It's about choosing the right conditions for your own spiritual growth. Remember, you are born free. You are free to choose the reality you desire. Help yourself. Help yourself. God helps those who help themselves. And those who help themselves help God. That's an old French saying, too, from the French Revolution. God helps those that help themselves. That's what the French shouted as they started chopping heads off, uh, getting rid of they, that corrupt government, the French Revolution. The, the slogan was, God helps those that help themselves. What, a, what an enlightenment. God helps those that help themselves, and those who help themselves help God. Hip-hop added that last part on. Most people believe their God needs no help, so they ignore their responsibility to actively participate in the further manifestation of their God in the physical realm. For it is through us that God enters the physical world. In fact, it is through us that all things spiritual or non-material come into physical manifestation. We pick and choose from the infinite chaos what shall become physical and what shall remain non-physical. However, because of fear and doubt, we learn, in, because of the fear and doubt we learn in public school education, many people go on living limited lives because they do not believe in their ability to assist something deeper than themselves. You're putting yourself down. You're lowering yourself. Because of all of these spiritual and religious views, you think you ain't good enough for God. Because of everybody's thoughts on God and everybody's opinions about God and the fancy suits and the this and that. You say, well, damn, I'll never be that. Love and develop yourself. Let's highlight 169 and 170. We're going to highlight 169 and 170. Highlight, 170, highlight 169 <clears throat> and 170. Here's why. Know this. By fulfilling your purpose, you assist your God. And by assisting your God, you assist your purpose. Likewise, by helping others, you help your God. And by helping your God, you ultimately help yourself. Even further, by living a righteous life, this is the key. 
One raises and strengthens one's godlike abilities. This leads to victory over the streets. That's our motto, victory over the streets, over the traps and obstacles of the streets. How do you do it? By living a righteous life. One raises and strengthens one's godlike ability. This is why you live the righteous life. This is why you want to do what's right. Do what's right. By living a righteous life, one raises and strengthens one's godlike ability. This leads to victory over the streets. Whether you believe or you do not believe your, your God, simply living a righteous and disciplined life minimizes your own suffering in life. That is so simple. Whether you believe or do not believe in your God, simply living a righteous and disciplined life minimizes your own suffering in life. Righteousness and discipline are simply the best foundations for continued health, love, awareness, and wealth while living in the city. Know this, you do not have to believe, of, you, do not have, you do not have to believe of God in order to live a righteous and disciplined life. You don't have to believe in God to live righteously. Nor must you believe of God to be morally to be a morally sound human being. Atheists uh, uh, speak uh, like this. They say, "Why do I need to be? Well, why why do I need to know God to be a good person? <laughs> Let me just be a good person." <laughs> and you can't argue with that either. Um, nor must you believe of God to be a morally sound human being. Nor does a religious belief of God make you morally sound. However, whether you believe of the presence of God or you do not, evil thoughts and ways will only bring you suffering. Again, evil thoughts and ways will only bring you suffering. In truth, acts of morality and righteousness simply prevent depression, guilt, anxiety, fear, doubt, etc. in your own life. For when you know that you have lived and are living right, such a knowing prevents guilt, insecurity, low self-esteem, and other mental hindrances that uh, other mental hindrances that arise out of undisciplined and immoral living. It is just that simple. It is just that simple. I'm just moving around because um, my leg is about to go to sleep here. Hold on. Uh, you know what? Let me get a towel. A um. Uh, let me let me get no 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 leave that on. Let me just get a, a pillow. No, there's a thin one. Let me get a thin pillow there. Yeah, that one. Let me get that. Thanks. Just gotta put this right here. I'll sit on something softer. Yeah, that's it. All right. Um. Right. Right. Uh, let me hit this last part. For when you know that you have lived and are living right. Such a knowing prevents God insecurity. <laughs> prevents, prevents God. When you know you are living right, such a knowing prevents guilt, insecurity, low self-esteem, and all other mental hindrances that arise out of undisciplined and immoral living. It's just that simple. God does not require your belief. It is you who require or don't require a belief in God. Know this. God is not mocked. <laughs> People talk shit all day. And God is not mocked. But when you finally decide to truly live within the presence of God, morality and righteousness, health, love, awareness, and wealth, peace, etc., automatically manifests in your life. For it is the actual presence of God that brings your life into discipline and righteousness. For us, the existence of hip-hop proves the existence of God's presence within us and around us. For it is God's actual presence that disciplines the life of the believer. Others can believe whatever they have the understanding for, but the existence of hip-hop proves for all hip-hoppers there is a divine intelligence looking out for us. And to walk in this intelligence, we must become more like this intelligence. We must voluntarily accept the conditions of divine mind if we are to be down 
with its laws and conditions. Let's highlight that whole thing. We're getting 174. Highlight the whole paragraph of 174. It's almost an affirmation. You can say this to yourself every day, especially this last part. This part about, but the existence of hip hop proves for all hip hoppers that there is a divine intelligence looking out for us. And to walk in this intelligence, we must become more like this intelligence. We must voluntarily accept the conditions of divine mind if we are to be down with its laws and conditions. Know this, to truly walk within God, we must walk like God. Again, know this. To truly walk within God, we must walk like God. We must finally acknowledge that God is actually here. We must decide to walk in spirit and in truth. We must finally decide to give a divine performance, which is, which is a performance of and in spirit. <clears throat> we must begin to observe our thoughts and emotions, not become them or helplessly act them out. As hip hoppers, we must learn to use our minds correctly if we are to perceive our way of life, our arts and our cultural, uh, if we are to preserve our way of life, our arts and our cultural uh, traditions. We must, we, we must condition ourselves to the real conditions of God. As leaders, we must become spirit beings observing the physical world. For in spirit, our ultimate expectations of ourselves disappear. <laughs> in spirit, you have no expectation of yourself. We expect the unexpected. Not that we do not set goals, but that we, are, that we clearly understand that God is the opener and the closer, the promoter and the headliner in every arena of the attuned hip hopper's life. We live a spiritually guided life. As a performance, our lives should draw the applause of God. But first, we must decide that our God is truly with us now at this very moment. Is God with you right now at this very moment? We must adopt the true personality of God, which is already felt within our being. For when you actually walk the true path of spiritual awakening, seeking God on your own, you automatically fall in line with the principles of all holy books. In fact, you see them clearer. As an example, Christians taught us the golden rule, which was, to do unto others as you would have as you would have done unto yourself. However, when you actually walk such a path, you learn that you cannot treat people the way you would like to be treated because everybody wants to be treated differently. Everyone has their own preferences as to how they want to be treated. What is good for one can be bad for another and vice versa. Therefore, after walking such a path, we have learned that we have learned that do unto others as you would have done unto yourself might be an inaccurate translation. The true statement for those who actually walk such a path. This is the key. This is, I'm not questioning the Bible or what it what it written what it says. I'm confirming the path. This is what happened. These are the facts. When you actually walk the spiritual path, here's the facts of it. The true statement for those who actually walk such a path is do unto others as they would do unto themselves. In other words, treat people the way they want to be treated. Do not judge anyone's life or ways or character. Simply treat people the way they want to be treated, which will be evident by the conditions and traditions of their lives. This can be called the platinum rule. Let's go ahead and highlight that. I'm highlighting 178.
This is called the platinum rule. The Bible speaks of the golden rule. And the golden rule is do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. But that is for a tightly knit community where everybody knows everybody and everybody's following the same laws and everybody got the same traditions and customs and, 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 and the same religion. Yahweh is our God. That's it. We're called Nazarenes. That's it. And in fact, I could say within hip hop, I could say within hip hop, um, um, you know, uh, 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 do in hip hop, do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. We could say that, uh, uh as a community, like, you know, I want breaking, so I'm going to approach you as a B-boy, B-girl, because I'm going to do unto myself. I'm going to do to you what I want, what I want for myself. I'm not going to treat you. The way I wouldn't, the way I would treat, I wouldn't treat myself. So what I want for myself, how I want to be treated myself, that thing, the way I treat myself, is the way I'm going to treat you. Now in a family, like if you even in hip hop, the way one b boy treats another b boy, the way one b girl, the way one graph writer, the way one MC treats another b girl, graph writer, MC. That's cool, right, I'm a graffiti writer. The things graffiti writers don't want, I ain't giving to you. I'm a graffiti writer, you a graffiti writer. Do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. But when you live in multicultural environments, when you live in a multicultural nation, multi-religious nation like the United States, do unto others as you would have done unto yourself does not work. Because what you would do for yourself, other people don't even want. They're from some other culture. They're from some other place. They're from some other mind state. So you can't treat people the way you want to be treated. In fact, it's a little selfish in a multicultural society to treat people the way they, to, to treat people the way you treat yourself. That means my only relationship to this person is whatever I want for myself. My relationship to this person has nothing to do with the person. Do unto others as you would do to yourself. So you are the criteria of the relationship according to this philosophy. According to the golden rule philosophy, you are the standard of the relationship. You do unto others as you would do unto yourself. So the standard of what we're going to do is based on what I'm doing for myself or how I want to be treated. The way I want to be treated is the way I'm going to treat you. The things I want for myself, I'm going to give to you. But that only works if you're part of one community and everybody doing the same thing. If you're part of a nation, <laughs> like if you're in the hood, <laughs> okay, and you got to, you, you running around with a hundred different cultures at any given time, the golden rule doesn't work. Golden rule doesn't work. It works on a surface level. I'm not going to treat. We know we don't want to be stolen from. So why are you stealing? You know you don't want to be harmed or hurt. So why are you harming and hurting? Just a law of karma. Basic understanding of do unto others. Uh, what go around, come around. These kinds of things. That's standard. That's basic. And we know that. And we respect that. But like I said, this is a philosophical approach to spirituality and to God. And so here we have to question these things. How are we getting our concepts of God and our concepts of spiritual principles? Who's giving us this? Where does it come from? What's the basis of it? So, so, so do what, so, so highlight 178. Okay. The true statement for those who actually walk such a path is do unto others as they would do unto themselves. Look at how people treat themselves and you treat them that way. Don't judge nobody life. Now, of course, if somebody's harming themselves or doing something like that, you might not want to do that to like, if you're harming yourself, let me help you harm yourself. You might not want to do that, but that's how far the platinum rule goes. If you harming yourself and I tell you, yo, you harming yourself, and you like, fuck you, I'm going to do it anyway. The tune hip hop is like, you know what? Do unto, that's what you want to do? 
do you. <laughs> That's it. That's called the platinum rule, and that works better for the hood. The true statement for those who actually walk such a path is do unto others as they would do unto themselves. In other words, treat people the way they want to be treated. Do not judge anyone's life or ways or character. Simply treat people the way they want to be treated, which will, which will be evident by the conditions and traditions of their lives. This could be called the platinum rule. As hip hoppers, we need a new spiritual story one that matches our lives today. We know where God is. We are, we are just, you know, we know where God is, but we are just too ashamed and too afraid to approach God because of the guilt that we have been trained to accept through the stories our parents have been forced at gunpoint to believe. Did you hear that? Those days are over, <laughs> okay? We must now begin to expect the power of our God to rescue us from the residue of American slavery and terrorism. The hip hop solution to such residue and terrorism is simply self-creation. Together as a hip hop community, we must call out to our God. We must begin to appreciate our, God, our own God force. Wow, that's profound. Together, uh, as a hip-hop community, we must call out to our God. We must begin to approach our own God force, which is the force behind our collective consciousness, which is called hip-hop. For when you appreciate something, you get more of it. So let us appreciate God. The law of the universe is that you attract more of what you like and of what you dislike simply by acknowledging the existence of the thoughts that you create. Therefore, as a community, let us begin to appreciate God, ourselves, and our hip-hop reality. As a growing community, we must call out to our divine nature, which is God. Our divine nature is God. We must call out to our divine nature. This is done not only by simply calling out to God through an earnest prayer that comes from the sincere cry of your heart. Here, calling on your God has to do with walking in spirit, personality, nature of God. When I say walk in spirit, the personality and nature of God. This walk is an act of self-creation, self-direction, self-control, and a divine performance. It's a divine, this is a divine performance. This walk is an act of self-creation, self-direction, and self-control. Matter of fact, come on, I got to get that. Let's, yeah, yeah, go ahead and get the whole 182. I was going to underline, but I need to see something real quick. Word, word, okay. Okay, go ahead and highlight just 182. Highlight 182, okay, because it's explanatory, it's explaining something. And, and this last line is, is, is what's most important. This walk is an act of self-creation, self-direction, self-control a divine performance. So when you go to the divine performance, when you're teaching this to other hip hoppers, this is this goes with the divine performance or the divine performance, you can speed ahead and say, you say, what is a divine performance? A divine performance is self-creation, self-direction and self-control. When the attuned hip hopper walks in spirit, now this is the piece right here. When the attuned hip hopper walks in spirit, in the nature of God. When a tune hip hop walks in spirit, that hip hop is God is being called into her life without any specific prayer, affirmation, or meditation. Did you hear that? When by walking in the spirit of God, you ain't gotta pray, meditate, none of that. If you want to, go for it, but you're in the spirit of God. 
Here, the attuned hip hopper no longer tries to make things happen through prayer, affirmation, or meditate and or meditation. Here, the attuned hip hopper simply recognizes and truly acknowledges the presence and power of God everywhere and effortlessly unexpected and miraculous situations suddenly occur. I'm living this. That's why I'm saying it. That, this is what the truth is. If you could raise your mind to the idea of God, make the, make the God idea your personality, miracles start happening. It is at this stage of spiritual development that good things just happen in the life of the attuned hip hopper. And as far as the universe is concerned, such a hip hopper is indeed down by universal law. Such is the result of, a, of the divine performance, and it is this performance that declares one's victory over the streets. You know, we got to get that again because we're talking about divine performance. So go ahead and highlight 185. I am talking about winning all kinds of battles. Con and look at this, <clears throat> because I'm writing this and I'm, I'm teaching this, and this is the point right here. I'm not just reading a book. This is what I have experienced and this is what I am experiencing based on this particular kind of knowledge. And I'm transferring that over to anyone who has the consciousness to receive it. Others are listening to me right now. You don't know what I'm talking about. Some of you are looking at me right now just because I'm KRS-One and you just want to see a celebrity talk. But some of you are really interested in what I'm teaching here. And that's who I'm really talking to. I'm talking to everybody, really. You get what you can get out of these teachings. But you know we're talking gospel of hip hop. So we're talking, this is, this is, this is the truth. And not truth because I'm saying, oh, this is the gospel of hip hop and this is the truth. Look at what this knowledge brings to you. Paragraph 186, okay? And let me just read the last part of 185. Such is the result. Let me hit the whole 85 and then get you over to 86 because this is so important. It is at this stage of spiritual development that good things just happen in the life of the attuned hip hopper. Don't, isn't that, okay? That's what we want. And as far as the universe is concerned, such a hip hopper is indeed down by universal law. Such is the result of the divine performance. The divine performance puts you down with universal law. And it is this performance that declares one's victory over the streets. Here's the victory. I'm talking about winning all kinds of battles. Conquering all obstacles and enemies with ease. And moving at the speed of light. I'm talking about attaining an aura of authority that has the law enforcement of any city eager to protect and serve your well-being. I'm talking about attaining and maintaining the true respect of the people. All of this comes with a divine performance. I'm experiencing every one of these words right now. This is not me preaching to you some, some far off something. When I get up from this teaching right now, this is the experience that I'm having with this knowledge. I'm talking about attaining and maintaining the true respect of the people. I'm talking about prolonged health, true love, creative awareness, and uninterrupted wealth. I'm talking about unexpected opportunities that are impossible to plan, yet effortlessly produced and received. I'm talking about real freedom, freedom to recreate oneself, freedom from the workforce. Did you hear that? Freedom from the workforce. Divine performance frees you from the workforce. Freedom from inadequate and outdated education. Freedom from stress, depression, anxiety, and guilt. Freedom from oppression. Freedom to set aside time for yourself and for those you truly love. 
I'm talking about protection even when you don't even know that you're being protected. Fighting without physical harm. Teaching without planned lessons. <laughs> Healing without cures. Communication without speaking. These are the results of hip hop's divine performance. I got to get you. Matter of fact, I need the whole thing highlight. Right here from 85 all the way down to 89. 189. 185 all the way down to 189. We need that whole piece because that right there, this is a promise. This is an affirmation. This is what is going on right now. And if your teacher is not experiencing this that he's teaching you, turn this shit off right now. <laughs> because I don't make no sense. Okay? But that ain't what's happening. I make all the sense. Why? Because this is what's going on. This is what I'm experiencing right now based upon the knowledge that I'm teaching. I'm not teaching you something that I'm not experiencing. I'm not teaching you something from 2,000 years ago that has to be interpreted into our time. I'm talking about winning battles. <laughs> I'm talking about the respect of the people. I'm talking about getting money. <laughs> I'm talking about being healthy, being confident in your abilities. That's what the divine performance brings you. It says these are the results of hip hop's divine performance. It is here that we move from mind to spirit, from revolutionary to revelationary, from knowledge to wisdom. It is here that we learn to overcome our worldly thinking and submit. It is here that we, we learn to overcome our worldly thinking and submit the natural self to the divine self. Submit your natural self to your divine self. When this decision is made, calling on your God, your divine nature is no longer necessary. Your God is always with you. You are aware now that God is never separate from you. You acknowledge now that the great chaotic oneness, God, is so much more than a he or a she that is distant from oneself. You now experience God as a happening, a process, a going on, a great event that exists just beyond or behind the material world, animating everything you perceive with your senses. It is here that your thinking and acting, it is here that your thinking and acting come into harmony with your God. This is the enlightenment right here. For we, for we truly realize now that there is, there is only God vibrating at different levels of consciousness, manifesting different forms of matter and life circumstances. However, all of it is the great event and you are a conscious part of that universal chaotic event. You are conscious because the event is conscious. As a being of light, as consciously aware, as a being of light, a consciously aware spirit, the attuned hip hop is full of God's spirit and is led by God's will. For it is when we become aware of our inheritance of the love of God that we are truly at peace. We know who we belong to. We, we know where we are from. We are from God. That's where we come, that's where we come from and that's where we're going. What can, you truly, uh, what can truly upset you when you truly know that the infinite nurturing mind of the universe and all reality actually loves and believes in you? Sadness and or depression can only occur when we are ignorant of or simply deny this truth. Be grateful for your victories for, for the victories in your life, they are truly the works of God. God, the great event, is life. God is truth. God is love. God is light. Therefore, where, wherever God is, there is life, truth, love, light, and you. 
In truly knowing this, we are forever in joy and peace. In knowing this, we love ourselves, not for the sake of self, but for the sake of God's love for us. We commit to ourselves, not for the sake of self, but for the sake of God's commitment to us. How can we not love what God loves? Think about that. How can we not love what God loves? And how can we not be committed to what God is committed to? How can we not value what God values? God values us. See, this is the philosophical piece right here. This is the piece. This is this is it right here. This is and look at this. This is this is deep philosophy here. Okay. How can we not value what God values? God values us. Look at this. Imagine. God is committed to you, but you are committed to everything else, including God. Look at this. This is disharmony. How can you truly have peace? How can you truly feel joyous? If the God of the universe is committed to you, why then are you not committed to you? <laughs> okay, come on, y'all. We got to get this. Let's get with, um, let's get one, one, 198 and 199. Let's get 198 and 199. Highlight 198 and 199. Look at this. I'm going to hit 198 one more time. Because this, this, is, this is it. Imagine, God is committed to you, but you are committed to everything else, including God. Like people say, I, I'm, I'm a believer in God. I'm God. God, God, God. God is with, I'm with you, God, and God, and God, and God. Here's the, here's the point. God don't care about that. God is looking at you. God's looking at you. I mean, come on, come on, come on. Look at this. So God is committed to you, but you are committed to everything else, including God. This is disharmony. How can you truly have peace? How can you truly feel joyous? If the God of the universe is committed to you. Why then are you not committed to you? Okay, if God is committed to your well-being, why are you so committed to God? You think you're following God, but you're not. If God is committed to your well-being, why are you so committed to God? Shouldn't you be committed to yourself? Meaning your own well-being? Like to really follow God, you should be taking care of yourself because God's activity is, the, is loving you. <laughs> God is in love with you. God is concerned with your health, your love, your awareness, your wealth. And what do you do in turn? You say, well, God, I'm concerned with you. And you think that's the right thing. You think, right, to be concerned with God that's the correct thing. No. Think about it from God's perspective. And this is what I mean. See, this is divine performance. You are God. You are God within God. So think like a God. Think on God's behalf. God, if God is, is committed to you, then the plan is I should be committed to whatever God is committed to. Whatever God is committed to, I'm committed to that too. God tells you, I'm committed to you. So then what should you be committed to? Yourself. Love and develop yourself. This is the highest spiritual law. This is it. Or at least, this is hip-hop's law. I'll put it that way. This is how we get down, okay? So, focus your attention Focus your attention where God's attention is and you shall be in harmony with your God. Again, focus your attention where God's attention is and you will be in harmony with your God. Look where God is looking. Stop looking at God and look at where God is looking. 
Focus your attention where God's attention is and you shall be in harmony with your God. God loves you. So you should love you as well. Your God is teaching you. So you should be teaching you as well. Your God is guiding, protecting, and depending upon you. So you should be deeply engaged in guiding, protecting, and depending upon you as well. Highlight that. 198 and 199. You are what the universe is doing. The intelligence of the universe is not focused upon the intelligence of the universe. The intelligence of the universe is focused on you. Focus your attention upon God's attention, and there you shall find peace, prosperity, purpose, and joy when you see the world the way God does. When you focus on what God is focused on. When your character is God's character. Now you can see clearly. You can, because you're seeing through the eye of God. You're seeing through the eye of divinity. So now you can see clearly. Know this the love we feel for ourselves and for others radiates from the presence of God within our very being. For when love is expressed, God is expressed. When truth is expressed, God is expressed. Truth, compassion, charity, and mercy are all godlike behaviors. When the hip hopper performs these virtues, such a hip hopper is being godlike. Such an image and likeness is the God force declaring its victory over the streets. And there it is for our reading today. That was the third track. I hope you got that. I hope you got that. I hope you took that in. Next week, we're going to start with track four. But this week, I hope you took in what we're actually dealing with, what, what we actually taught today. You know, we don't sit here and preach that we could ever take the place of God. We, we don't preach that, that we could take the place of God. We, 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 we never do that. That's, not, that's blasphemy. We don't do that. But we do teach that not only is God real, the concept of divinity and divine mind is real, but we also teach that you are within that real. We are all immersed in the body of God. Christians say the body of Christ. We are immersed in it, like in your mother's womb. You, we are in this world in a womb. And you are in your God, like you are in your mother. What she eats, you get. When you kick, you make her uncomfortable. When you're still, she's at peace. Think about that. Think, I mean, think about, think about that really, okay? Think about that. When, when you, imagine a mother pregnant. Imagine a mother pregnant, right? Imagine a mother pregnant. When the mother, and mothers, you'll know this. When your child is asleep and at rest, you get peace. <laughs> you get the peace, okay? But when your child in your belly is kicking and fighting and, or playing, just when your kid is playing in you and kicking and doing stuff and moving around, you got to adjust yourself. You got to move. You getting aches and pains. You going through all types of stuff because of the being inside of you. Now imagine then God then. When you're hurt, when you're depressed, when you're sad, when you're confused, when you're guilty, when you're doubting yourself, when you're selfish and jealous and when you're always, just like you kicking in God's belly. It's like, oh God, I got to deal with this person. But the minute you find peace in the knowledge, you say, I'm still now. I can rest now. Not only do you bring peace to yourself, you bring peace to your mother God. This is what you want. This is what we have to do. We got to take care of God. We can't just keep asking God to take care of us. We got to be reciprocal with that. Take care of God too. 
And when you take care of God, when you working for divinity, God, you do not understand, okay, what that life is like, okay? This is the life of KRS-One. This is my, that's why I teach it. I see people all day walking around in a daze, confused, don't know nothing, don't know what, never was taught this knowledge. So I teach it and I put it out there for whoever has the consciousness to get it. You got the consciousness to get it and feel, get this, because it's really wonderful. It's really wonderful. And like I say, the uniqueness of our temple is that your teacher is experiencing his teachings. Now, that's not to say, let me say it's unique to us, but, you know, if you go to a real synagogue, mosque, you know, so on, you will see your, your, your teacher experiencing the teachings. And that's the problem with so many Christian ministers. You go to the church and they're not experiencing the life of Jesus. You go to the synagogue, they're not living Moses. They're not living David. They're not, and I say this respectfully. I say this respectfully. Too many Jews are seeing how the rabbi ain't living the, the life of Abraham. And they turned off. Too many young Muslims are looking at the imam and say, you're not living like Muhammad. Peace be unto his name. You're not living like that. You don't match the book. You're telling me to read this book, but your own life don't match it. This is what our kids, this is why our kids don't want to come to God. This is why our kids don't have no faith in God, thus themselves. This is it. So we're hoping at the temple of hip hop that we could at least try to remedy this with new knowledge on God, with new knowledge on divinity with new ways to approach your own self-development. Nothing I'm saying, by the way, is new. <laughs> this is timeless, ancient knowledge. What's new is that I'm speaking to you in the language of hip-hop. That's what's new. Same old knowledge, but brought to you in, a, in the modern language of hip-hop, with God instructing us the whole way. So here we are. This is it. It's called the Temple of Hip Hop. We gather every Sunday, 12 o'clock, just like this. And we talk about God. And we talk about spiritual living. Today I came from a philosophical point of view. Because I wanted us to really get this. We're not going to be hooping and hollering and praise and worship. That's not what we're doing here. We're going to study this. And really gain the consciousness needed to be divine. And not even divine like, oh, I'm divine. What, I got light coming from my head or I can touch and heal. That's TV. Real divinity is when you love and develop yourself. That's it, y'all. I'm KRS-One. See you next week.